been overwhelmed by the weight of your sin. Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. for our transgression crushed for our sin punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hey, well, good Sunday morning to you. We're uh, happy that you chose to worship with us today. If you would, stand to your feet, and let's praise the Lord. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-pleasing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless or they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Walking daily by the Savior's side, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Did you rest each moment in the cruise? 
crucified Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul is in blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Beside the garments that are stained with sin, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing from the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you gone? White as snow, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-pleasing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? So glad that you could be here today, especially today as we uh, partake in the Lord's Supper. Uh, and I just pray that God just start moving right now in our hearts and our minds. Amen. It's great to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, we're going to be out of Hebrews 9, 11 through 15. But before we do that, uh, I just want to th- uh, welcome you and welcome those who are here online. If this is your first time joining us online, you can go to our website, bfchurch.com, click on the 
guest tab, and from there, click out the short, uh, fill out the short survey, and we'll get in get in contact with you. I think it's home crowd here, uh, but if you do have any prayer requests, you can use the welcome card in the seat back in front of you. Uh, you can drop that off in the offering receptacle, and we will be praying, know that we will be praying for you. But let's go ahead and take about a minute. Let's stand up, and let's greet those that are around us. And in my summer time, it's so damn sacred here for sinners such as I. Was it for crimes that I had done? He grown. Return to your seats and remain standing. If you could return to your seats and remain standing, go ahead and open your Bible if you have it with you. Open to Hebrews 9, verses 11 through 15. I'm going to have Sophia come on down, and she is going to read today's scripture reading. Okay, again, we're out of Hebrews 9, 11 through 15. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation. And not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling those who have been defiled, sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your, your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that since a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant, those who have been called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Let's pray. Father God, we just come to you this morning. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy that you give so freely that we often don't deserve. Thank you, Father. You love us so much that you bestow it upon us anyway. Father God, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would fall into this place. Lord, open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to see and to hear and to receive the word that you have for us this morning. Lord, thank you for your precious son, Father God, that hung on a cross to die for our sins. Lord, that we would be um, spotless because he took our place. Father God, we pray that this morning as we partake in the Lord's Supper, we would be reminded, Father God, of all that he took on for us, his children. Father God, that we could be, that we could live free and that we could come to you, Father God, because he took our place. I pray we would not take that for granted. Help remind us, Father God, what that means. Lord, we just, again, we thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone who's here, for those who are watching. I pray that you would be with us this morning as we come and we honor you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Please remain standing. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. 
Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's palms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. He was fierce for our transcription. He was crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds we are here. He was fierce for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice in the light. your grace, we are saved, we are saved. He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. 
And by his will, by his will, we are here. pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our sin the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are here and by his wounds by his wounds we are here By his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. Hallelujah. Well, you ought to praise the Lord for that. Amen. Without those wounds and without that blood, we don't have anything as believers. We've been talking about the, the blood covenant the last couple of weeks. So I want to, let's look a little closer at the blood itself in our message today, and then we're going to I think the best thing we can do after these three sermons is to share a time of communion together. Looks like mostly home folks today, but I would say one more time, just in case, if you're not a member of Believer's Fellowship, that does not exclude you from sharing communion. You should be a believer, all right? There's no Jesus person in your Lord and Savior as you come to this memorial meal, and, and uh, we celebrate all that the Lord Jesus has done. And I hope that today, after sharing this message, that you'll be even a little bit more appreciative of all that the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us and done in our stead and in our place. Uh, <clears throat> it's interesting that I was preparing this message on the blood covenant. My grandchildren stayed with us uh, over the weekend last week and on into most of this week and attended vacation Bible school here. And we had a great time with them. And of course, that's poor grandchildren. have to listen to Poppy preach a whole lot. But we have a lot of fun with it. But one of the questions asked by one of my granddaughters as she was looking over what I was going to preach and because she was sitting in the office after vacation Bible school and watching me as I'm preparing PowerPoints and stuff. And uh, then I talked to them about that. The night before, I talked to them about the blood covenant and she wanted to know what that was all about. So I took her through the nine-step ritual, Hebrew ritual we've talked about in the past. And she was just fascinated by that. And as we talked about it, she had a great question that following morning as she sat behind me while I'm preparing a PowerPoint for this sermon. She said, um, why the blood? Why the blood? That's a great question. Unfortunately, a lot of people never ask that question, do they? So it's, uh, it was, I think, the verse that I shared with her is the first verse that I'll share with you today as we talk about this portrait of the blood of Jesus. Well, it looks better back here than it does up there. So, uh, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is, by, it, for it is the blood by reason of life that makes atonement. It's interesting that thousands of years before scientists ever understood or discovered that life is in the blood, it was already written in the Bible. And it was only in this last century or so, or probably several centuries, that we've discovered that life is in the blood. In other words, without the blood, you can't have physical life. You've got no blood. You've got nothing going on. You might as well be buried, all right? But that's literally true in the Bible. I mean, the Bible just flows with this theme of the, the blood of, 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 of sacrifice, the blood of Jesus. In fact, there's 427 references in the Bible about the blood. So I think if there's that many references in this book, I think we ought to realize that uh, it's not a minor theme in Scripture. It's a major theme in Scripture. And if you've been here as we've talked about the blood covenant over the last week, you understand that. But without the gospel, without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, this message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, is really dormant and dead, and we are deprived of eternal life. But the gospel just oozes and exudes and amplifies the fact that for us to be saved, there had to be a sacrifice for our sin. 
even as Jesus was sharing the, the Lord's Supper in that communion meal in the last in the upper room that day, he says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the many for the remission of their sins. In other words, Jesus is bringing about, even before he goes to shed his blood, the importance of the blood and how that it had to be shed for the sake of sin. Paul added this, or whoever the writer of Hebrews is, it says, In almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. In other words, my sins cannot be removed if the blood is not shed. He also explained that we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. Redemption means to be bought. To redeem us from our sins, the price had to be paid for sin, for the wages of sin is death. So Jesus sheds his blood in death for us. So Peter added this, that we are not redeemed with the, with the blood of, you know, uh, with silver and gold and precious stones. It's not that offering. The offering that's accepted by God is with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle John agreed when he wrote, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. In other words, I can't be forgiven of any sin if there is no blood that's been given on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's the scripture, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. The early church understood this. Of four preachers in the book of Acts, there's 22 sermons recorded there. Following the four gospels, we have the book of Acts, and there's four preachers preaching them, and they all preach the same message about the, the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is all laid out in the gospel message. They understood, as we should understand, that the provision for our salvation, that the giving of eternal life comes as a result of somebody making payment, somebody that was, had, an ex, had, a, had an acceptable payment, and that was obviously the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I recently, I've been in the series of a bunch of medical tests as we all go through occasionally. And one of the first things they did in all this process is that they drew blood for a full blood panel. What does that mean? They draw a lot of blood. All right, I feel like they laid about four quarts out there. I wasn't quite counting it all right, but I'm thinking, I probably need to eat something before I leave here. They kept drawing. I thought, okay, another one. And it wasn't these little vials, you know, it was on the big fat ones that looked like they're taking about a half a gallon. <laughs> Anyway, they take that blood, put it in a microscope, and run it through all the different tests to see everything from blood sugars to, to, to white cells, red cells, and all the different things that are going on with our system that tell us what's going on. But they had to, they had to examine it. I, I want us just this morning to kind of put the blood of Jesus under a panel test and, and examine it just to see how effective and how, how important it really is because there's nothing more important in regard to your salvation than the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to see it's very important that the blood had to be shed on our lives and that God has applied it to our lives and has given us salvation for everyone who's trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at it. In analysis, we'll start there. In analysis, the blood of Jesus Christ is perfect. There, Jesus Christ was sinless. There is no sin in him. The virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ kind of sealed that and certified that Jesus was perfect. If Mary had been impregnated by Joseph, then Jesus would have had a sinful nature. All right? But that's not the way it occurred. The Father of Jesus is the Lord Father of heaven. All right? The God of glory. The Bible makes it very clear that Jesus Christ was sinless. He was perfect and without sin. Judas cried, even after he betrayed him, I have betrayed innocent blood. Pilate said, I find no fault. And Paul said, for he, God, hath made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So let's just clarify it. Jesus' blood was not, I guess we could use this word, uh, defiled or putrefied because of a sin nature. He had no sin nature. It had not been in parted to him because of the virgin birth. Matthew 1 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. John added in 1 John 3, 5, hey, there is no sin in him. Look at this other verse, just to give a little more clarity on the, the perfection of Jesus. In John 18, 38, what was Paul's statement? I find no fault in him. John 8, 46, Jesus said, which of you will convince me, it may say in your Bible, or convict me of sin? 
even he talked later about when the wicked one comes, when Satan comes, he said, he will find nothing in me. What's he mean? The Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. So when he comes to Jesus, he can't find anything to accuse Jesus of because he is spotless and sinless. Hebrews 7, holy and harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens. Again, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. He was spotless, the Lamb of God. Again, from John 1, John 3, 5, in Jesus is no sin whatsoever. So we understand that the first analysis leads us to this, that the blood of Jesus Christ is undefiled and it is perfect. In application, the blood of Jesus Christ is a result of that is obviously pure. One of the reasons we use grape juice and not wine, now understand that there's lots of wine in the Bible, but there's different words for wine. We use natural juice to represent the blood of Jesus because it is undefiled. When grape juice, wine, which is basically the first terminology we find, just, just as pure blood of the grape wine has not undergone a process of deterioration or fermentation. In other words, it's not gone through putrefaction. For those of you who are wine drinkers, you're just drinking bad grape juice. <laughs> All right? So understand, that doesn't represent, that kind of wine does not represent the, the body of Jesus Christ. This, this bacteria is working in that other wine to produce a rotting process. All right? This, that could never give a proper picture of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of communion. For all that is holy, Satan always has a counterfeit, by the way, and communion is no exception. Pure grape juice, that's the true symbol of the pure blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, just as bread without leaven is a perfect symbol. Because leaven, remember, in the Old Testament represents what? Sin, right? So we have unleavened bread and pure grape juice. When the pure blood of Jesus is applied, all right, there, there is the, the, the glory and the grace and the, the beauty of our communion. The blood of bulls and of goats, the ashes of heifer, the sprinkling of the unclean, sanctifies to purifying the flesh. But how much more shall the blood of Christ, how much more shall this precious blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, how much more will that purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So when we look at the blood of Jesus, we look at it as the pure blood of Jesus that's applied to our lives and our hearts by faith, and it provides what? The pure blood of Jesus provides cleansing for us from our sin. What's the old song we sing? What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. First Peter 8 tells us this. First John tells us this in many places. The blood of Jesus Christ himself cleanses us from all sin. First Peter, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed, what? With corruptible, corruptible things. You were redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ who was without a blemish and who was without spot. For as much as you know you were redeemed. That's the first part. Do you know you were redeemed? If you've come to Jesus in faith, You've been redeemed. The price has been paid. You've been brought out of your slavery to sin, cleansed and made new. Let me go to another aspect of the blood of Jesus Christ. In the action of the blood of Jesus Christ, we understand, and it is important to understand that it is perpetual. Remember the Old Testament sacrifices where the high priest went in had to be offered annually and perpetually year after year. The blood of bulls and goats would be presented. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way, hey, that uh, we've been cleansed eternally and forever. The animal sacrifices don't do. Though, who needs not daily as those high priests, talking about Jesus, he doesn't need to go in every day or annually to offer up a sacrifice for our sins and then for the other people. What he did is perpetual. He died once when he offered up himself for our sins. So like the high priest of the Old Testament who went in daily, who went in annually to confess the sins of the nation, present the sacrifices, sprinkle the blood on the altar, Jesus doesn't have to do that. What he did was the ultimate fulfillment of all those things rep that they represented. 
He went in, offered himself, sprinkled the blood, and it is a once forever deal. That's why there's another passage in the book of Hebrews that says that if, if we could lose it, if we could, if we could, if we could just lose our salvation and what God's done for us, to be saved again, Jesus would have to die again. But you cannot lose it because of this perpetual action of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't need daily to go in and offer the sacrifices again. He just goes in now, not by the blood of bulls and goats, but by his own blood. He goes into the holy place and presents himself and obtains eternal redemption. We don't get it, lose it, get it, lose it, get it, lose it. It is what kind of redemption? Eternal redemption. Hebrews 9, 26, but now once in the end of the world he hath appeared to put away sin. How? How do you just put it away? By the sacrifice of himself. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, Hebrews 10, 12, he did what? He sat down at the right hand of God, symbolizing, stating that work is done. He said it in last words on the cross, it is finished. It is done, paid for. Now I commend myself to the Father. The death of Jesus Christ set in motion for our lives this cleansing process for all of us who trust in him. When we come to Jesus Christ, we are given the gift of eternal life that he purchased by his own blood. And thank God, in that moment, we are washed clean once for all, forever. The Bible calls it in Hebrews 13, 20, in talking about the covenant like we've been for the last week, it calls it the blood of the everlasting covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. Our faith in him, his blood, is all it takes to settle it forever and forever. No more sacrifice. Now, we know we can sin, all right? We know that we fail. We all stumble in many ways, as James says. But we know, First John says, we can come to Jesus and be made clean. Let me go a little bit further in the accomplishment as we look at the blood of Jesus Christ. You see that the blood is powerful. Once again, the songwriter and the song we sing is that, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood of Jesus. Would you owe evil a victory win? There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. The Bible says that God has redeemed us, that Jesus has redeemed us to God by the blood of his Son in Revelation 5, 9. Revelation 12, they overcame them. They overcame the wicked one, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. Just pause for this moment and just reflect on this. Not only has Jesus forgiven me, not only has he given me power over the devil, but let's back it up even more. Jesus Christ, when I yielded my heart to him, washed me of every sin that had taken place in my life in the past, what would ever happen in the future, and whatever takes place in the present. He did a supernatural work. This is a powerful work where me, a sinner, separated from God, a sinner, He's holy, he's unapproachable, he cannot be reached by somebody like myself, I can't touch him, I can't grasp him, I can't have him without the Savior, without somebody paying the price for my sin. The only way I can pay the price for my sin is go to hell for all eternity. That's the judgment. Jesus, who knows no sin, all right, who is absolutely perfect, comes in, rescues me, by shedding his blood for me and saving me. Now, that takes a miracle. My nature is changed. My desires are changed. Now, the old nature with its desires always seeks to allure me away. Satan uses that element in me of my old nature to draw me away. But this new nature is greater. This new nature is filled with Jesus. This new nature is redeemed. This new nature is God's, and I can choose to live for him because that comes under the heading of the power of the blood of Jesus to make me new, to wash me and cleanse me. It takes amazing power to do that, all right? It takes an incredible miracle to take somebody and literally change them from the inside out, and not just in a moment, but for all eternity. I think I went to a photographer one time, and I asked the photographer when I got there, I said, I said I'd like a picture taken. Can you do me justice? He said, sir, you don't need justice, you need mercy. 
But anyway, <laughs> the power of Jesus doesn't deal with me in the, in, the, in the context that I have to redeem myself. The blood of Jesus is my redemption price, and it's been paid for, which brings me to this next point, in acquittal. This is where the blood of Jesus Christ is permanent, all right? And acquit, that's a heavy word, by the way, all right? It means literally to pay off, all right? To, to, to free someone, to absolve them, completely absolve them and acquit them. I mean, it has a far-reaching meaning, not just from the present, but it extends all the way, you know, from the past to the future. Now, some of y'all remember the, the trial of O.J. Simpson, who was acquitted of murder. Uh, when someone says they're acquitted of murder, what does that mean? That means that O.J. Simpson will never stand trial for those murders again. He was acquitted. You say, well, I don't, I think he did it. All right, that may be your point. But it doesn't matter what you think. All right. He, he, he's acquitted. And what if new evidence comes? Sorry, he's been acquitted. All right. You, you can't try him for that again. It, 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 you know, the opportunity was presented, has been given. But understand, you and I are guilty. All right? We need mercy, all right? We, we need acquittal. You say, well, we, we want justice in that situation, well, we'll, but yet we want, for our situation, we want mercy. Isn't it, amazing, isn't it amazing in this cancel culture? That, that's the way it is. Everybody wants to crucify somebody immediately, some, some failure. Hey, we're all failures. Before you start always crying out for justice, you might remember you will cry for mercy. Learn to have a forgiving heart and a heart that wants to see redemption take place. Here's the grace of God. This acquittal is far-reaching. I love what way the scriptures write. It says, his mercies are new every morning. Somebody ought to praise the Lord for that. Amen. New every morning. So not only my past sin is covered, but what if I sin today? Well, the price for that's already been paid. I need to come experience it by confession of my sin. Isaiah says it clearly. He says, hey, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me. But I have redeemed thee. Did you love the way David the psalmist talks about it when, when he mentions it? He said, listen, as far as, as the east is from the west, all right? The east don't, doesn't meet the west. They, they just keep going in the other directions. God says, I will remember your sins no more against you. I'll not bring them up against you for how long? Forever. Jesus' blood covers our past sin, our present sin, our future sins. That means all sin. That has to do with the sins of, 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 that I would commit, we call sins of omission and, and sins of, of commission. How many re realize that there's a difference there? The omission sins are the things that I omit, that I'm not doing, that God has called me to and God's told me to, but I'm not doing it. The sins of commission are the things that I am doing. <laughs> that he's told me not to do. The omission is I'm not doing the things he's told me to do. And we can become guilty of those things. But if we take those to Jesus, the Bible says his blood will cover all those things and he will remember them no more. Jesus' blood continues to atone for all sins for all eternity. This blood transforms, redeems us, brings forgiveness. I don't need to confess sins that I committed a thousand years ago. Listen, when I came to Jesus, here's the big issue. When I come to Jesus, the problem with Joe Arms is, and with each of us is, we are what? Sinners, right? And I, I'm guilty sinner. And when I come to Jesus, I'm just coming and asking forgiveness for what I am, who I am. And he forgives me. But as I come to Christ, my life now is committed to him. These things begin to get specific, and that's when, as 1 John 1, 7 says, we need to confess our sins, things now that I'm becoming aware. Hey, if God had showed me the night I got saved, all that junk that's in my life and going to be shown in my life with the years to come, it would probably kill me. I'd probably die of a heart attack. Oh, I can't be that bad. <laughs> I am that bad. Get over yourself. <laughs> Amen? Just get over ourselves. But here's the beauty, that when I do fail and stuff, I don't have to hide it or to push it on the rug. I just bring it to the light. Say, Lord, forgive me of these sins. That's why when we come to this point about the power of the blood of Jesus, and we have this appraisal of it, the appraisal is, as we've sung and said so many times, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Peter wrote, but with the precious blood of the Christ, that's what we've been redeemed with. It's without spot and it's without blemish. So when I take the Son of God into my life by faith, when you receive Jesus Christ into your life, 
by faith. Everything God has for you is included in that moment. Now this life becomes a life of discovery. All right, I, I discover myself and where I need to trust the Lord more. I discover his abilities more. I realize that the only way to walk with God is by faith and through the blood of Jesus. But it's a, it's a life now that's, you know, of, of just illumination. Illumination where God is working in me. That's why in 1 John 1 also it says, as we walk in the light as he's in the light and we can have fellowship one with another. Because it says, that next verse, because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Praise God for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But here's one thing. To see, the power of it and the aggression of the blood of Jesus is that the blood is protected. Remember the, the death angels we talked about in Exodus 12. The blood shall be a, a, a token upon your house where you are, all right? And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land. You remember the story. God is sending the plagues on Egypt because they will not release God's people to go into Canaan, and they keep resisting God, and God sends this final plague of, uh, of death upon the firstborn child. But he tells the children of Israel, all right, you can avoid this judgment that's going to come from my hand by slaying this animal, and he tells them about this Passover lamb. Passover means I pass over your house. I don't bring judgment on you or your family if you do what I've told you to do here. Now, what this if you do issue is a matter of faith. Will I trust Jesus right now? Well, I just don't think he's going to kill the firstborn family in every house. I think I would believe it if God said it. So they bring the lamb in. The lamb is, is watched over. Then the lamb is slain and the blood is sprinkled and the lamb is taken in and eaten. All right? They go through the process and all this process is an act of faith. It's the same for you and I. We move in faith and trust that what God says when judgment comes and he comes and he does. He comes over the land of Egypt in that historical picture. And what does he do? Wherever he sees the blood, he passes over it. But wherever there's not blood, that house is visited with his judgment. He does this. He makes this happen. But for us, if we've trusted in the Lord, we've acted in faith, then what happens for us? We're under that shelter. We're under the blood of Jesus. Everybody who has placed their faith their love, their commitment in Jesus Christ is under the protection of the blood of Jesus Christ. So you have the power of God at your disposal to protect you. Do you get that picture? Do you see how that applies to your life and how it applies to my life? If not applied, if we haven't trusted Jesus, then he does not see the price of redemption on you. All there is for you is judgment. That's why when Jesus was speaking, he said, listen, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world. I mean, because they're hitting him with the same stuff that his. Oh, you're just judging everybody. <laughs> the same response is, I'm not the judge. Jesus said, he is, by the way. I didn't come to judge, though. Why? Because you're judged already. In other words, it's not when you die you'll be judged. You're, judged. you're under judgment today. Or you're under the blood of Jesus today. He said, I didn't come to, for condemnation. I came to set you free. I come to give myself as a ransom to pay the price to set you free, which is the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. That when he looks at my life, he sees the blood of the lamb. That when he looks at your life, he sees the blood of the lamb. So it should bring us to think with, with, with kind of a, a moment of gratitude and glory to see all that the blood of Jesus Christ has provided. Why the blood, Poppy? <laughs> That's how I'm honorably known in my household by my grandchildren. Why the blood, Poppy? Because life is in the blood. And praise God for the life of Jesus. I want you to stand with me. We're going to receive the Lord's Supper, but as usual, and I think the Bible gives us a clear picture of this when Paul speaks to the Corinthians, is they're going to receive a human. He says, every man before he approaches this table should examine their own hearts. So that we know that the price has been paid for my sins. But there are things in my life that are not confessed, that are not right with God. So I'm going to ask you just to bow your head where you are. I'm going to ask Pastor Gary to come. I'm going to come. But if you'd like to, to just between you and Jesus,
take a moment to examine your own heart and pray. Maybe you want to come to the altar. Maybe you just want to kneel right there where you are and yield to the Lord and, and confess to the Lord. When Paul wrote the church at Corinth, he said, listen, don't approach this table with sin in your heart. Why? Because this table represents redemption from our sins, release from our sins, cleansing from our sins. And boy, what a slap in the face, so to say, to God's face or to Jesus's, if I just take the Lord's Supper, you know, so frivolously, without a recognition of that it's, this, this blood was given, his body was given to set me free. So with our heads bowed, I'd ask you just to approach the Lord right now in your own heart, as Paul the Apostle said, we should examine ourselves to see if there be any wickedness in us, any evil way, any heart that's not right. Maybe you're here and you've never really given your life to Christ. And you've been religious and you've been decent and you've been moral, but hey, that won't cover your sin. The wages of sin's death. Jesus died in your stead. What would hinder you today from just surrendering to him and letting Christ be the Lord and the Savior of your life? If you want to do that today, right there where you're standing, you can just welcome into your heart. Come into my life, Jesus, I give myself to you. Then come to myself or Pastor Gary and say, listen, I gave my life to Christ today. And we just want to pray for you. We just want to encourage you in the Lord. Just step out today and make that bold decision. Maybe you just want to come as a believer to the altar and just say, Lord, I, I want to confess these things to you. And just get it right today. We can have revival in our hearts today if we take this seriously. We can have a real presence and power of God in our life if we get real today. I encourage you to be real with the Father right now. As he seeks to move in your life. We sing as we worship. Would you respond to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you? In Jesus' name. He was pierced for our transgression and crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. He was pierced for our transgression and crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice. And the life that you gave, we are healed for you paid the price. By your grace, we are saved. We are saved. He was pierced for our transgression, crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice and the life that you gave. We are healed for you pay the price. By your grace we are saved. We are saved. He was pierced for our transgression, crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by, by his wounds, we are healed. And by his wounds, by, by his wounds, we are healed. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. Father, we thank you today that we can gather here as your body and glorify you and honor you and recognize you and do as you told us. Do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name.
Somebody say amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Be seated. I'm going to ask those who would help me serve with these elements today. You can come. The rest of you can be seated. We're going to pass these elements out. We'll pass the bread out first as you gentlemen come. If we pass this out, I'd ask you to take it and let's, uh, let's just receive it from these gentlemen as they pass it from you and hold on to it, would you, just so we all can receive it together. We're uh, following our own guidelines by instead of having a plate with the bread on it, we've used one of the communion cups to put these, these unleavened bread wafers in for you. I encourage you to receive it from these guys' hands as they bring it to you and just Take this time to really reflect on the precious sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Would you help us? What can wash away this? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Out I go, oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, oh, but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. The purity of the blood of Jesus. Let's just for a moment reflect on the body of Christ. All that he endured for me and all that he endured for you, it's almost unspeakable. So horrendous, so torturous, so incredibly ugly. The precious Lamb of God, knowing what he knew was getting ready to happen within hours, he takes this bread as an example, unleavened from the Passover table. He said, this is my body. And as they looked at that bread, they knew the Jewish law required for that bread to be cooked without leaven, representing no sin. They knew what that was. They knew that that bread had to be pierced and had to be placed in an oven where the marks from the oven would show on it even. Well, Jesus bore those marks for us and those scars for us. His body was pierced on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious gift to us. So let's take and just say thank you to the Lord in your own words. Just take a moment to thank the Lord for the sacrifice of his body for you. If nothing else, say, Lord, I love you and thank you. Just let him know from the heart, a depth of your own heart. is a moment of just worship and humility before him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this humility, this this grace that flowed from you that so powerful and so incredible that you would give yourselves for us and give your body for us. So when we take this today, Jesus, we do this in remembrance of you. May you be glorified in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you take any in remembrance of Jesus? You know, the scripture says it very clearly. It says, in the same manner that he'd taken the bread, he took the cups, and he passed it out amongst them. He says, you take this amongst you again, hold it. As they, as they 
serve it to you. You hold it and we'll take it together. But let's just take this time to thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Perfect gift from heaven. He was pierced for our transgression, crushed for our sin. The punishment, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. He was pierced for our transgression, crushed for our sin. Punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We are God. healed. Yes, we are. By your sacrifice and in the life that you gave, we are healed for. By your grace, we are saved. We are saved. He was pierced for our transgression, crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. talked a lot about the blood of Jesus Christ today, and I hope it's brought back a, a lot of remembrance, but the best way to remember that today, I think, is remember the application to it of your, in your own life. When was that time and that moment when you gave your heart to Jesus Christ? You realized that he died for your sins, and without him, there could be no redemption, there could be no hope of heaven. You take a moment to thank the Lord for that, because it took the blood to accomplish that in your life. No salvation without the blood. No hope without the blood. No heaven without the blood. So why don't you right there where you're seated, thank Jesus for the precious blood that was shed for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you shed your blood at night in the garden before they came to arrest you. You were sweating blood. When they took you to the judgment halls, you were beaten, beaten severely, crowns that shed blood upon your head, stripes that shed blood upon your back, nails that pierced your hand and feet where blood flowed from, then ultimately where the spear pierced your side and the water and the blood. Jesus, you gave all your blood for us. You gave all of yourself for us. And I thank you today that you love us that way. You gave yourself for us. Lord, teach us to give ourselves unto you each day and to appreciate the precious blood that you've given to, on our behalf in Jesus' name. Would you take and drink in remembrance of Jesus? Yes, sir. Thank you. Be seated. Let's sing one more song. You got something else? What's, what's that first happy song you did? <laughs> Here we go. Let's stand up and worship the Lord together. Amen. To Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you gone? Spotless are they white, white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do the chorus again. Are you washed in the blood? Say it louder. 
God, you are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen? So you may be seated. Brother Gary's got some announcements as we close today. I'm so glad you were here to worship with us. Oh, before he comes, you, you just come on up. But just, just thinking about this morning, just, just for a moment, look around this room. I, you know, the body of Jesus Christ is represented by Believer's Fellowship is really phenomenal. You think for a moment about how at times of your own struggles and difficulties you had brothers and sisters who prayed for you. Even on this day, and we have so many others in our fellowship at both campuses are struggling with different things and suffering through different trials. Please know that they are being prayed for. You, you matter. Your prayers matter. Your love matters. Continue to be the body of Christ. Continue to care for one another, love one another, respect one another, and be with one another, amen, on Sundays. God bless you. Amen. I'm actually going to have Karen come up, and uh, we had a great week of VBS last week, and so Miss Karen's going to come give us a recap of all that went on. Uh, just God was moving. Amen. Amen. All right. This is easier in front of a bunch of kids. Um, <laughs> it's easier to teach school than this. All right. Um, yes, we had, a, we had a really great week of Vacation Bible School, and I want to thank everyone for allowing us the opportunity and privilege to work with your kids, um, grandkids. Um, I know we were blessed as well as I, I hope that we were able to bless them as well. Um, our guiding principle, this our guiding verse this week was Psalm 25, 4, teach me your ways, O Lord, or show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Um, that's kind of the, uh, the verse that went through the whole week. Um, kids learn how to be thankful. They learned what worship was, what salvation is. We went through that and how to, uh, what believing in God was like and what that looked like. Um, we had about 30 kids attend, and I think we had about 17, about 17 helpers um, in all areas. Um, and I want to thank everyone who volunteered their time and um, sacrificed the time this week to work with our kids. They had such a great time, and you guys have been such a blessing, and everything that you were there did uh, that you did were there for, and also those who gave of the, um, the supplies and uh, donated supplies to us. We really, really appreciate it. that. Made such a difference for our kids. Um, we did have a uh, so out of the thirty kids this week, we did have three kids who accepted Christ Jesus as their savior, and that yeah. And that was the big, one of the biggest blessings for us. So that was, that's what it's about. So appreciate you allowing us to spend the time with your kids and encourage you guys to get involved in the kids' ministry. Amen. That's it. You got to plug in. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Just thank you for the leaders and, and both. We had youth leaders. We had adult leaders. And Karen, I want to thank you and Pastor Matt just for, for just all that you do with that. Um, and especially allowing me to come in and play with the kids. I used I went in this week and riled them all up, and then they had to deal with them after I left. So just thank you for allowing me to, to go in there and be a kid this week. So it was a blessing to see them at work and y'all at work and just, and just sharing Jesus with them. So thank you for that and all that you did. Uh, and as they start preparing for next year, start praying about how God will use you in VBS next week. Uh, next year. Uh, don't forget our Sunday night youth and kids ministries meeting tonight at 515. Wednesday night Bible studies, of course, this week. Wednesday, we are continuing both of our Bible studies. It, we're about seven weeks in, but that's okay. Come on in and, and just jump in and, and be a part of the fellowship and, and that, that hour of uh, Bible study. You're going to be blessed. Don't forget to stay connected with us via Facebook, online, uh, online with our website and YouTube. For our first-time guests online, if this is your first time visiting us, go to our website, bfchurch.com, click on the guest tab again, and uh, fill that short survey. We'll get in contact with you again here uh, in, if you're in service today. 
You can use that welcome card as a prayer card as well. If you have any prayer requests, fill that out. Drop it in the offering receptacle. Speaking of the offering receptacle, don't forget your godly giving and offerings as God continues to bless you and just do as God has called you to do, and that's to give. Uh, and so three ways to give online, in person, or you can drop a check off. We don't pass a plate. There's offering receptacles in the back. Finally, Angela is going to be out there in the back for our fellowship on the 7th, so don't forget to sign up because if you don't sign up, all we're having is chicken. All right, with that being said, you are dismissed. <laughs>